Hello! What's going on guys? Welcome to a new Android tutorial. Uh, sorry for the long wait, doing some stuff, mostly job. Anyway, uh, so this video decided to do some uh, loaders because loaders in Android are amazing. They're, they're just absolutely freaking ridiculous. And they're a great way of separating your activity from your data from your network stuff. So, like the three tell each other what they want and inform each other when they get it, but they don't actually directly communicate. It's a little strange, this system, but we're going to build one and it's going to be awesome. So, we're going to create a loaders. And it's just going to be com.twisted equations. In case you're wondering why things are lagging a little bit, I'm doing some GPU work. Uh, some graphics card, heavy graphics card stuff, so this video might get a little bit laggy, but we're fine. Uh, we're going to make it as a library, usual nonsense, and finish. So we're going to go with loaders, and we have our main activity, set content view, all ready to go, right, good stuff. Let's get cracking. So what is a loader? A loader essentially loads data. That's all it does. A loader a asynchronously, which means it doesn't affect your main thread. So this is how you should be calling your database. And if you're not calling your database on a loader, shame on you. But for any heavy data loads off the, uh, you know, off the disk, you really should be doing it off the main thread. And the loaders make this super easy. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to specify a loader. And it's very simple. We're going to call this random string loader. And we're going to extend loader support v4 content. It's very important you support you do that. Okay. And we're going to string Actually, we're going to load an array list. I tell you what, I'll do this um, in a minute, but we're just going to random string loader. Okay, so we've created a random string loader, and that extends, oh damn, I've mixed it up. You don't extend loader, you extend async task loader. A, S, Y, N, C, Y, N, C. Async task loader and always extend the support library one. Now, what type are we going to specify or a type declaration? It's going to be a an array list string. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to return an array list of strings. So let's just implement our stuff and we're all ready to go. Neat. So how do loaders work? So we've got our methods ready to go here. The loaders go through a life cycle. And uh, life cycle is a little bit odd though. Essentially what you do is the the activity, don't forget this is done through the activity, has something called a loader manager. And you get an instance of the loader manager using get support loader manager or get loader manager depending on what system you're using. If you're using you know act action bar activity or uh, fragment activity or whatever. So that's how you get your loader manager. Then you tell the loader manager to start a loader. And it, it starts the loader. And then the loader, is once the loader is started, it does its loading and it does its thing. And then the loader delivers the results to the activity. And then the activity receives those results in a callback and processes them and does whatever it needs to do. So that's what the loaders essentially are. They process the results and put them back, and it's really neat. So, how do we actually implement this? Well, we need to override a few extra methods here. So, in here, we're going to override um, deliver results. Our deliver result and 
essentially what happens is this here comes in here the loader is started it calls this load in background this data then that's returned here is then passed into this method for you and then you super deliver a result and that passes it up to the activity so let's uh, write a little bit of code in here to generate a an array list we'll say 20 strings long okay array list string I'm not using Java 7 support at the moment so I don't get I don't I'm not using diamonds a uh, diamond by the way is when you just say this and it'll still work but whoops didn't see anything I'm totally not messing about with coins at all on my computer anyway better must remember not to leave stuff on my clipboard before doing a video so we're just gonna create a random string so we're just gonna say string oh, hang on char it's a quick and dirty way of making random string char array car equals array dot or equals uh, let's see right let's create a random character right okay I might have freaked out my computer a little bit but there we go to char array so we've got a random characters and then we're just gonna say we're just gonna create random strings so for int i equal or yeah, equals zero not o zero i less than 20 i plus plus so this is going to create our 20 year strings and then in here we're just going to say another we're going to make an inner for loop that will actually generate the string so essentially it's going to create 20 character long strings so we're going to do the same loop again i didn't mean to copy that bit um yeah so we're going to loop through we're going to create our string here we'll just call this into o because I'm original like that so I'm just going to do a double loop so um, up string uh, I don't know string random equals nothing and then we're just going to say random random plus and we're simply going to say char oh crap no we don't want to do that so I think it's going to add on oh we need to create a random object Don't know what the hell's going on there, but don't care. Hang on a sec. I was wondering why it wasn't working. You'd say this. So random. Dot next. Int from zero to char dot lent. Oh yeah, we need to just say random string. So that's just going to add random strings onto it from 0 to n. So it's just going to randomly pick a string, an int uh, or a character from this, bolt it on, do that 20 times, get a 20 character string. And then here the random string is going to be added to our array. Let's 
random string and then we want to return our array now unfortunately this is going to run very freaking fast so I'm just going to do a little trick here I'm just going to call we're going to actually uh, sleep the thread for three seconds or two seconds and then just throw that in a try catch so uh, we're just going to sleep it for two seconds to simulate a long load or even a second but you'll see how it works so we're going to do that to deliver result now there's a couple of things you need to be aware of in um, these loaders is that loaders can be started and ended very quickly so you want to handle that so let's say you've got a very big database and you are searching through it okay and you have a loader doing the work which is good so you're not UI blocking but let's say suddenly um, you know let's say suddenly uh, you want to stop the load so you know your activity calls gets its loader from the manager and then stop load well you want to make sure that your uh, your loader you know once you stop it to load it shouldn't deliver any results ever so in this deliver results we are just going to say if is cancelled or no is reset is what we want now if it is reset we don't want to do anything return else actually technically it shouldn't be is reset we'll do that a little differently we'll say is started because that means the loader is still working so is started super dot deliver result data that means we have to load uh, deliver the results straight away okay so we're all good there everything's ready to go our loader's more or less done now and um, technically we should say if is reset here return null and then this should check for null this means like if we cancel the load let's say we call a load and then cancel it immediately we want to stop this nonsense happening or any of this so but we're not going to bother with that for now um, we'll get into more advanced like you know caching of strings and stuff like that like you know data caching checking and to make sure the data is new anyway so good we're ready to go so we're going to uh, very quickly we're going to implement our loader callbacks now into the actual activity so we can manage the loader so we want to implement loader manager dot loader callbacks so I want to import loader manager LOA isn't it? Oh no it's OA the loader callbacks and the type we're doing is array or is it? No I think it's random string loaders the type pretty sure that's it hang on let me double check this okay so I went on the actual uh, site so the loader callbacks that load cursor we don't want to load a cursor we're loading an array list string which is what our data is going to come back and it should import I don't know why it's not importing, that's really strange. I do have the support library, I do. Hmm. Could be that uh you know we'll just change this to say, you know, async task loader like that. From the actual direct from the package. That is really weird. Perhaps I'll just get rid of that. There, loader callbacks. <laughs> no idea what was going on with that, wouldn't work. Anyway, we've got our callbacks. So the callbacks go in three stages. Create the loader. Finish the loader, or the load is finished. And then reset the loader. So what we're going to do is, we're going to create a method in here. Our, we won't bother creating the loader yet, we'll actually set up, because we need to display this text, don't we? Now that I think about it, actually back in the loader I know I'm jumping around a bit mad here but we want to create the random character plus oh yeah and then we want to just after generating our string we want to concatenate on a new line character because 
There we go. If we concatenate a new line, plus equals, um, it'll just mean that they'll appear in a nice line, so it won't get a big block of text. Great, we're good to go. Right, let's go into our layout folder, our layout file. So this is just called text view. Hello world, so if you just go in here, and we're just gonna say, and ID Android ID equals plus ID text view. Just going to get a reference to that text view up here. Boilerplate. Set our content. I'm doing important that nonsense. Oh, got an error here. I never said plus. Ah, oh, frick, I can't remember what it is now. Plus ID text view. There we go. All right, now it's working. So what we want to do is, first of all, we want to create our loader. And then like, you create your loader with an ID and a bundle. You can pass in bundles into the loader. And you can use a loader.getargs, but we're not going to do that for now. And so we're going to create our loader. And then the loader manager will automatically start it, or will we'll tell it to start the loader anyway. So. First of all, we need to just return our loader here. So we're going to say random string loader. Loader equals create a new random string loader. This, so we need our context. Okay. And then return our loader. Okay, so that's our loader created. Unload finished. So this is where our data comes back. This is our loader that pa is, is passed back. Now you're probably wondering what, why would you need the loader pass back? Let's say you've got five loaders loading data from three or four databases and all this mad stuff is happening. You want to um, tell which loader it is, so you get the loader's ID and then you use a switch block or something like that. So what we're going to do is, so normally what you do is you'd, you'd get your ID here in here, you'd set it on the loader, so you say loader dot set ID. I think that's what it is. I can't remember how to do it, but you can do it anyway. Uh, so the load finished and the loader reset. So the load finished. We want to get our text view. And uh, what we want to do is we want to loop through our text view and add all the text. So we're just going to quickly iterate through this. So we're going to say string uh, text in data for each string text in the data. Iterate over it using an iteration loop. I love that for syntax because it's amazingly handy. Our text view dot set text. I want to get the text. Get text uh, plus the data text. So this just means it gets its old text and it reuses its text over and over and over and over again. So it concatenates it all together. Okay, we're good. Um, 
we should be good and then unload and reset we're going to ignore this callback but this is where you would cancel off a lot of stuff so let's start the loader itself so let's actually start our loader so we're going to say on the on create we're going to say this dot get loader manager dot initialize loader we need to pass in an id for now we'll just say five the bundle we're going to say null because we don't have any reason to use a bundle and our args for the loader callbacks is this so that's telling it use this object for the loader callbacks so this will start the loader okay and this will set up the loader to work and then the loader will get the results and deliver them great so if we run this i just need to uh, start my nexus 7 emulator because it's amazing We'll launch that. Boosh. Hacks mode. Such hacks. Our hardware accelerated execution manager. Blah, 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 blah. Huh. Apparently uh, I've got two updates to Open Broadcaster, which I will promptly ignore. Okay, good, our thing is launched. So let's run this. Android application, okay. It'll pop up, should pop up saying like, oh, there I've got your, uh, yep. So my, ne my actual Nexus 7 is plugged in, so we'll just run this on the emulator. I'm charging my Nexus 7. So two seconds should go by, and it should load. Okay, something's wrong. Something has gone wrong. so I looked it up on the developer site you have to force the load at the start okay you have to say force load or it won't work so essentially what happens is like the loader the reason you have to force the load it seems like something oh, I should call it automatically shouldn't it there we go so as you can see we've got our 20 random generated strings for the heck of it I'm going to increase the string the text size because it's absolutely minuscule I will make it 20 s2 sp so that's a large text Make it nice and big. And so we'll just run this again. So that's, this is the very basics of loaders, the, the absolute core basic. And what we're going to do is, see wait two seconds and then load it on data. What we're actually gonna do in the next video is, okay, you know what, I'll just, and uh, the next video guys, we'll just set the text to nothing for our start because I like doing that just get rid of that hello world nonsense but uh, there's a lot of optimizations we can do here particularly when it comes to observing data sources so a good example is sure this is loaded as data but okay yeah, our data is loaded we're ready to go mm -hmm. but let's say you're observing a database for changes now I'll show you how to do that in the next video we'll get into content observers but our custom content observers but if we want to observe something let's say we observe something and it's a, an update okay to the database so let's say we're looking at a list of ids or a list of images or a list of articles or a list of youtube video data and you want to observe the data so let's say you know our service has ran in the background so we've downloaded some new videos or something has gone in or some new data has gone into the database then we get alerted the loader will be alerted saying oh look this date that that table has changed okay good I'll go reload my data my data has changed send the results up to the activity but what if the data hadn't changed what if some videos came in and there was no uh, data changed you know, your data didn't change it just added some results but didn't do anything to your data well then you have to you know that means that because your data hasn't actually changed you shouldn't deliver the results because let's say you have a list view of videos and the data has changed but the list view you don't want the list view to reload itself all of a sudden you don't want it to go oh need to reload and it reloads the list for no reason when there's no new things to show so we'll get into those kind of optimizations in the next video guys but that is this is the most basic loader you can ever think of and i'll show you in the next video how to actually you know observe for changes and 
you know, do some really cool stuff. So anyway guys, as always I suppose it's been good talk and I'll see you next time.